I want to give you now one of the great reasons why we're here with our honorees and with this report. And uh, I want to give you the guy who's behind a lot of this here in Lachla. We made our executive director uh, last August. Hector joined us in 2008. And he's been working policy since then, education, mobilization, civic participation. I had him in 2008, 2009, and 2010 in all different states around the country. Most of you may have seen him recently as executive director, putting out the Latino voice on CNN, Agenda Washington, Univision, and El Punto. The Washington Post writes, Huffington Post writes, you read it, you'll see Hector in it various times, making sure that the voice of labor and Latino labor is heard everywhere in the country and around the world because some of these Latino groups out there in media have shown a lot of this press and things around the world even. Brothers and sisters, it was a great pleasure to make Hector our executive director and he's proven to be one of the best we've had in LACLA. Please a nice warm welcome for our brother, Hector Sanchez, who's doing a wonderful job here. I would like to initially recognize the other two co-authors of the report, uh, Andrea Delgado, senior policy analyst, and Rosa Saavedra, policy analyst. Please stand up. I also want to recognize the LACLA staff um, that worked so hard to put this event together, Carla Pineda, director of operations, Lupita Hernandez, where are you, Lupita? She's the real executive director. She's la jefa de LACLA, and the youngest member of LACLA, Francisco Rodriguez, eh, Natseli Verdejo, Fer Loera with technology and all of our website, eh, Polimne Alvarado with the graphics. Thank you, everybody, and thanks for all the patience putting all this together. <laughs> all of you have a copy of the report? If you don't, please just raise your hand, and, and we're going to pass some of these uh, eh, eh, copies around. How did we come up uh, with this concept and, and, and this report? We've been working and, and thinking about this possibility for a while. And it's a lot of coincidence that Secretary Solis just released her report one week ago. I swear, we didn't talk to each other, we didn't coordinate, we didn't see each other's um, reports. Uh, but I think that's a good example of how much this kind of work is needed, how much this kind of uh, uh, analysis is needed for a particular community that is under a serious attack. That's where we come from. Um, the report has six chapters. I'm not going to go to describe in detail all of the chapters. I'm just going to go through a couple of the main points, the center of, of, of the whole report, describe what we're trying to do. I know in, uh, you're going to have more time to read the whole report. If you have any co more questions, you can contact the co-authors, Rosa or Andrea, and I'm sure they're going to answer all of your questions. So what, a quick overview of some of the uh, conditions of the Latino community, and I'm going to uh, just go over a couple of points. I wanted to go into detail, but because of the timing, just going to go really quickly on some of the main points that we found in these reports. Latinos are the fastest growing group in the nation. Today, one out of six Latinos in the nation are um, Latinos today. And by 2050, we are expected to be 30% of the total population. And let me repeat that, brothers and sisters. 30% of the total population in 2050 are going to be Latinos. So we better make sure that we start working in the right direction to protect the labor rights, civil rights, and human rights of all these Latino workers. There is another interesting point. Um, Latinos are, in average, 10 years younger than the rest of the population. This is a very important point from the strategic point of view, especially within the labor movement. I'm going to talk about this unique uh, partnership that we're creating between labor movement and the com Latino community and how we need to be strategic about that. But the fact that Latinos are 10 years younger means that we need to pay special attention. And, and we have a graph that shows uh, where Latinos are, where the youngest group in the nation. We know that a lot of people are retiring or are about to retire. And from the economic point of view, we need to ask the question, who's going to take those jobs, especially if the general population is not, not growing, but only the Latino population overall is growing and is growing fast. 
even though Latinos are present in all the 50 states and are growing in all of them, 87% of all Latinos are concentrated in 15 states. That's also very important from the strategic point of view. Civic participation. Civic participation plays a central role, not only for LACLA, but for the, uh, the labor movement. Civic participation is the tool that we have as workers, as people, as community, to make sure that the people that represent us are really uh, mobilizing, are really putting an agenda that is progressive in this case. So for LACLA, civic participation is one of our main priorities, and we're already participating in the elections this year, and we're getting re ready for the presidential elections uh, next year, and we want to find as many partners in the room as possible because we want to make sure that when Latinos are under attack, when the labor is under attack, we need a progressive agenda that represent workers in Hill and workers uh, at all levels. So Latinos have become a central block in U.S. elections, but pay attention to this. This is very interesting and it's unique. In the last three presidential election cycles, the Latino voter turnout grew faster than that of all the other racial groups. Very interesting also from the strategic point of view. The Latino vote is a very strategic vote in elections. 91% of Latino voters are concentrated in 16 major electoral vote states. This means that these states comprise 300 of the 538 total electoral votes. Talk about the strategy and talk about paying attention to elect, uh, Latino voters. The strategy is right there, uh, right there. And as we continue growing in numbers, as we continue growing and engaging more Latinos, we are going to have a bigger voice in the table. What are some of the social and, and economic conditions of Latinos? Although Latinos are growing fast and are increasingly playing a central role in all aspects of our society, Latinos face several challenges that hinder their social, economic, and political progress. One in four Latinos today live below the poverty line. Latinos are way overrepresented in low wages jobs. Two in five Latino workers earn poverty level wages, which is more than any other group. Latino un unemployment rate in average exceeds the national average by 3% points. And the median household income for Latinos is 30,000, which is 30% less than white household income. Latinos lag far behind in order chip rates at 47% and also have one of the highest foreclosure rates. One in three Latinos lack health insurance coverage higher than any other group. In our Latinos also have the highest, uh, highest school dropout rate. Not a good picture, but a picture that also sent us an important message of why the work of the labor movement, what of the work of the Latino community is so important to make sure that we have a system that actually serves Latinos in a better way. There is another an interesting point. Even though Latinos are confronting this situation, there is a poll that says that Latinos are the most optimistic people in the nation and that we believe that we're going to get out of the recession pretty soon. So we're pretty optimistic about what's happening in the nation. That's a good point. What are some of the major la labor issues affecting the Latino workers? First of all, let me emphasize one point, and Secretary Solis already did it. Latinos, without doubt, and it doesn't matter what data you analyze, it doesn't matter what report you analyze, all of them are going to tell you the same. Latinos are the most vulnerable workers in the nation, particularly our undocumented brothers and sisters, and we must change that. Latinos are way overrepresented in the most dangerous jobs with the lowest wages and lowest workers' protections. Lowest wages and lowest workers' protections. Very important, that's the opposite of what we do in the labor movement. Latinos have the highest levels of wage theft you're going to see some of those graphs, and we have entire sections in the report that talk about these issues. Latinos are already earning minimum wages, and still they are being robbed of those minimum wages. They don't get their overtime. They don't get the minimum wages. And if that's not enough, Latino workers are more likely to get injured and die on the job than any other group. There is another issue that is of particular concern for Lackland, that's child labor in agriculture. 
because of lack of regulation and lacks on uh, a, a general policies, we have almost 600,000 Latino children working in the field under horrible conditions. With, uh, they are touching pesticides, they are working with certain tools, and agriculture is one of the most dangerous uh, uh, fields of work in the nation. That's why it's very important to m make important changes in, 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 this, in this area. One of the central chapters of the report, and very important for us, is